welcome to church everyone. Welcome to Croydon Vineyard. Welcome to church. Welcome to church everybody. Welcome to church. And welcome to our service. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Hi, welcome to Croydon Vineyard. We love you all. Hello and welcome to church. Hello everyone, welcome to church, I'm so happy to see you all. A good morning to you. Good morning to you. <laughs> welcome to our e-service. We love it you've joined. We're Tom and Leslie. We are, we're the senior pastors of Croydon Vineyard Church, one of 150 vineyard churches all over the United Kingdom, Great Britain and yes. Ireland. We have a good morning for you this morning. <laughs> we have a good morning. <laughs> We have a good morning for you this morning. Which we have a great morning love. for you this morning. We do. Chris Gander's yeah. going to come <laughs> and share a, his third thing on how to have great relationships in lockdown. These are so good, aren't they? They're it's really like great. Gems. Really great. And we're going to worship and then we're going to look at Mary who lavished Jesus with her tears and perfume and her hair. So let's pray. Holy Spirit, come. We want you to move with power to change us this morning in Jesus name Amen Amen We continue to think about ways to keep our relationships healthy during lockdown ensuring that fun is a regular part of our routine was the first forbearance exercising patience with one another that was the next thing and now thirdly fellowship or friendship our worlds have shrunk Unnecessary travel is not allowed. Social distancing is expected of us. Stay at home is the new norm. And the net result is that our normal social encounters are just not happening. Bumping into friends in the street, that's the exception, not the rule. We can't even plan a meal with those who are not part of our immediate household. So for our own well-being and for that of those we live with, as far as we can, we need to stay connected with our wider circle of friends. And they need us too. We all need a window on the external world that isn't the news channel. We need to feed on friendship. Because we need each other. One thing that keeps Mary and I going is the knowledge that separation from our friends and family is not forever. Until we can meet properly, we're WhatsApping and video chatting regularly. And we're so grateful for our pod and the e-services that encourage us to worship and remind us that we are part of a great community. And we really do recommend those. We found that the daily Bible readings are a great help and they're part of our routine. Part of doing something together as a community even though we're apart. Now, when we may have rather more time on our hands, what better investment could there be than to develop our friendship with Jesus? Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I fountain I drink from Oh, he is my song And let the king of my heart Be the shadow where I hide The ransom for my life Oh, he is my song You are good Oh, he is 
is my song. You are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. is 
running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Oh, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God oh, And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, yes, I will sing of the goodness Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. Yeah. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am of the goodness of God Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God So good, Jesus Always good, Lord
So we want to talk to you this morning about Jesus and Mary and we're looking back at the Gospel of John. Now John is always contrasting hard-heartedness with soft-heartedness. People who are headed towards Jesus and people who are headed away from him. And we've been saying that hardship becomes like a magnifying glass. The other main magnifying glass on our hearts is worship. That's right. You're going to read the passage? Oh yes, I'm going to read the passage. <laughs> so professional. So hardship is like a magnifying glass because it shows us what's inside <laughs> our heart when we go through hard times. And worship, real deep, pure worship is another magnifying glass. It shows us what's inside of ourselves. It does, mm. yes. So we're going to look at John chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Jesus anointed at Bethany. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, who Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honour. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. The house? <laughs> Sorry about that. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. <laughs> Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to keep himself, he, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Now we know what it's like. We've read the books. Just having talking heads all the time on a screen is not what anybody does. And so this week we've spared no expense. No expense. We, even though it's lockdown, we've found some of the greatest actors and mm. actresses possible to try and bring this story to life for you. So we hope you enjoy this. It's, it's really, it's it's been incredibly, incredibly Maybe. significant thing for us. Judas, the son of man is hungry. Sorry, what was that, Jesus? Simon the Zealot, pass Jesus the bread, would you? Sorry, I don't know if Jesus is talking about himself when he says the son of man. Here you go. Oh, Judas, you again. Jesus, Jesus, you've forgiven me so much. I love you, I love you. Oh, Jesus, 
I've got my Glizzy Beauty. It took me a whole year to save up for this. I just want to wash your feet. Just, oh, oh, Jesus. I love you. I love you. That's disgusting. What a waste of money. Leave her alone. What she did was wonderful. I think just I'm quite moved by that. Beautiful. Sometimes there's just not words to describe. No words. But the point of the passage that John is making <laughs> is that there's a clear parallel between the hard-hearted Judas and the soft-hearted <laughs> Mary and it's so vividly illustrated with what happens with the perfume it's like it's like the pouring out of the softness of our heart on Jesus's feet and worship is derived from the terms worth and ship so worship is a saying of your worth this and what happens in this passage what John shows us is that Mary says to Jesus you are worth this huge amount of money a year's worth of wages and Jesus saying looks at it and says Jesus is not worth that now now what we want to be really clear is that Judas isn't saying he won't worship he's just saying he won't give Jesus that worth what John clearly shows is that Judas was interested in worshiping using the worth of that for some other purpose which was for his own benefit Judas ultimately is displayed as a hard-hearted person to be interested in worshipping himself. The worth needs to be put to me. I deserve that is a phrase of a hard-hearted person. That should be mine. It's grasping, it's greed. Greed is the form of idolatry that the New Testament calls us to be alert to. Whereas generosity, especially sacrificial generosity to Jesus, is the soft hearted love is a demonstration now the point of this isn't to condemn because Jesus came not to condemn the world but to save the world but it's really important to be saved to be clear to acknowledge actually I'm a grasper I don't give in abundant generosity to Jesus it's just good to acknowledge where we're at and then we can receive the salvation to move on from there so we want everything we do to be an act of worship to Jesus. Oh, yeah. Every act is a statement of Jesus's worth. Uh, if we only view worship as singing, then we're quickly going to have a problem. Should we just sing all the time? Should we just be in church meetings all the time? Some churches suggest so, but the New Testament doesn't. Mm. So in John 12, this passage shows us some of the greatest acts of worship don't actually involve music at all or singing at all. They can be done at dinner, in the midst of a conversation. Many different things can be done as worship for Jesus. In fact, in Colossians uh, chapter 3, it says, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him yeah so we think there's two things from this passage that the holy spirit wants to encourage us to do in our everyday worship and the first thing is this you see uh, mary anoints jesus with oil which is an anointing for death and it's also an anointing as a king and so the first thing that we see in this passage is we should worship Jesus as the crucified king. We worship Jesus for the cross. Now there's many other great reasons to worship Jesus and we just thought it'd be great to catch up with just a number of people across the congregation who are going to give us their 60 seconds on why they worship Jesus. Tom asked me to say why I worship Jesus and it's very simple, it's because I love him. And I know he loves me and he's for me. Uh, when I come with a with an open heart, I always feel closer to Jesus. I, I can sense his Holy Spirit on me. I want to praise him for all he's done for me. But more than that, I feel like I'm being ministered to. So if I come with anger, he'll calm me. If I come confused, he'll edge me into a direction. <sighs> All sorts of things, but 
If I worship Jesus with an open heart, I feel joyful. So why do I worship? Well, I've got three quick points. Um, one, it's a response to all that God has done. Uh, you know, he's so worthy of our praise. Um, and it's just that it's responding to all that he's done. He's, he's died for us um, and all that he's done in my life and, and saved me and rescued me. Uh, it's a calling all throughout the Bible. We're called to worship Jesus. And um, in John, it says that his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. So throughout the Bible, we're always called to worship. And finally, it's because I love Jesus. I adore him and I want to pour out my heart to him in worship. And it's it's such an active thing in worship where it's not just us pouring out, but the Lord always gives back. Uh, so it's just a privilege to worship and lift up his holy name. No one has given me as much as Jesus has. He set aside his status as God, became human, lived on this earth, experienced betrayal and rejection from the very people he came to save, yet placed my needs and your needs above his own and died for me so that I can have a relationship with God the Father. Jesus is, is the only access to God the Father. He erased my past mistakes and failures so I can have a life free from guilt, shame and regret. And he has given me the right to carry his name like a father does a child and with that name comes an authority at which addiction, sickness and oppression has to cower. Why I am worshipping Jesus? 100% he's a God, he's a saviour, I believe in him, I trust in him and he is worthy to praise. God bless you. The reason I worship Jesus is that I love him and I recognise the sacrifice that he's made for me and the sacrifice that he's made for all of us. And even though I can't even begin to comprehend or understand the love that he has for us, um, I recognise that my identity is rooted in him. Everything that I do comes from him and without him, I can't, I can't do anything because I do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Um, I worship Jesus because I tried to live without him and it just didn't work. Um, I worship Jesus because he's good to me. Um, he's always there. He always understands what I'm going through. There's nothing that I could ever be going through that Jesus hasn't gone through or doesn't understand. Um, he always comforts me, he always listens to me and he always teaches me and corrects me when I'm wrong and he helps me to grow. Just love those reasons for worshipping Jesus. Every single one of them is totally valid. We want to stress that every single one is totally valid. We worship Jesus for so many amazing ways. But I want to suggest that in the Bible, there is one thing about Jesus which is almost like the highest call to worship him for. And it is, as Mary shows us, it's, it's the fact that he was to come to die and the fact that he would also be king. The dying king, the crucified king, the one on the cross. And the reason it's so beautiful is because when Jesus dies, it's his act of worship. He says we are worth his death. And somehow in worship, revelation, just a prophetic thing seems to have happened for Mary. And so often in worship, the Lord will just show us things about himself that are just beautiful and amazing. But it's when we really fix our eyes on Jesus as the lamb who was slain on the crucified one, the crucified king, that is when worship is at its purest and most brilliant, I want to suggest. And in Revelation, we looked at Revelation. Duncan did an amazing, blew my mind, amazing seminar, webinar for us on Revelation. And um, in it, it just is so clear that the, the one who's worshipped alongside 
the, the Father on the throne, the image for Jesus there is a lamb that has been slain. And the, the key thing here is, this, is a, just a, pr a prayer of praise that is sung by uh, the, the all of heaven and the elders as they fall down and they bow down and they're acknowledging how amazing God is. And, it, and it's not for how kind he's been and it's not for the amazing creation that he's made. The, the pinnacle, the amazing kind of climax of worship is to say you're worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain, because you were slain, because with your blood you purchased men and women for God from every tribe and language and people and nation, and you've made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. You see, there's one thing that no other person, no other being, nothing could ever have achieved for us, and that is the purchase of us for God, the transference of God, us from a kingdom towards darkness, towards Jesus' God's own kingdom, priests forever who will reign and bring goodness and blessing and kindness and mercy to the whole earth will be the image of God as we were intended to be. There's only one, there's only one who could have done that. And it was Jesus, it was Jesus on the cross. He purchased us for that with his blood. And I get excited about this because this is worship. This is what we worship him for because nobody else could have done that. And he did it. And he did it. And Mary somehow, with the ointment, she pours it on his feet. She testifies to the fact that he is the only one. He's the only one who could have purchased us in that way. And we love him for it. And we honour him for it. So Tom obviously celebrates Jesus as the crucified king. <laughs> but if we look back at the passage, Judas doesn't. Mm. He doesn't celebrate Je or worship Jesus as the crucified king. King. In fact, he seems to despise the idea of a crucified king. I mean, he'll follow Jesus to a certain extent, but he won't worship him as a crucified king. And a question for us today is, will we? Will we speak and sing worship to Jesus as our crucified king? Will you do that? Will you do that? Will you give Jesus specific praise for the cross? Will you give him specific worship for forgiving our sins? Will you give him worship for victory through the sacrifice he made by being the lamb who was slain? And when you see what Jesus has done that nobody else could do or did do, it moves worship from being an act of ceremony to a place of intimate encounter with the one who's loved you and forgiven you and won things for you that you never, ever would deserve. That's what we want worship to be for you. You see, Mary just casts, she takes out her hair. Now, you sh a woman should only have taken out her hair in the presence of her husband. It's shocking, shocking. It's, shocking. it's extreme. She laid herself open for so much shame and criticism, but she did this huge, shocking, costly, sacrificial worship of the lamb who was slain because she saw who he was, she saw what he was doing for her, and she saw how much she, he loved her. Judas, he doesn't even name Jesus in this way. He's like, that money should have been spent on something else. He doesn't even address Jesus by name. And a, a, an indication of hard-heartedness yeah. or soft-heartedness is this, how much do you speak direct words to Jesus? How much is your sacrifice and your work and your play and your living and your doing directed specifically, personally, intimately at Jesus? And how much of it is just declared out somewhere to anybody? So listen, we really want you to learn how to have intimate encounter with Jesus while you're here in lockdown. This is almost the perfect time. And many of us struggle with intimacy. It's a hard thing, but we believe you can learn it and yeah. you can learn it while we're in lockdown. In some ways, it's a better environment to do that in than when we usually meet in a school hall full of people. So we just encourage you to find places 
in your home where you live to have intimate encounter with Jesus and he can teach you intimacy that is safe and how do we do that how can you do that you need to learn that in a way that is good for you you need to learn to be intimate with Jesus in your own way you can listen to how others do it and look at how others do it and learn things but it has to be you and Jesus together mm. um, and just encourage you to make time it has to be time where you speak to him talk to him reveal yourself to him like Mary takes off her head covering and reveals herself to him reveal yourself to Jesus and then listen listen let him speak to you ask him questions let him speak and listen so learning to have encounters like this with Jesus that cultivate intimacy you don't have to be in a quiet place. Sometimes we think we have to be somewhere silent and quiet, although silence is good. Um, I used to go out to coffee shops um, to before have- Before lockdown. Before lockdown, to um, have time with Jesus. I'd go for a coffee with Jesus because that's what I would do with friends. I'd go and have a coffee and actually I had a, a prayer journal and I'd write in it. And I'd sit and I'd talk to Jesus and ask him questions and we just have a really, a time of intimacy and a time of connection um, and you know it wasn't a quiet place because there were people all around having conversations and um, the, the, the staff would be chinking cups and things so there was noise around but even during that I could I found I'd have a very intimate encounter with Jesus. And would it be fair to say that before that you always struggled slightly yeah. with intimacy with Jesus? You didn't massively find worship, some worship, something yeah. you connected with, yeah. but something you learned something in those times. Yeah, you learned intimacy. I decided to just uh, engage with Jesus in a way I would engage with a close friend, and so I went to do those things out of the house because in the house there's a lot of distractions, like I'd kind of want to put the washing on or mm. when I try to settle myself down. Now I've learned to do that at home. I can do that at home and during the lockdown when we can't go out to a coffee shop, you might be able to do it on your walk. If you like nature, you like to do, you, yeah. you encounter Jesus intimately on walks in nature when you do your exercise on your way to work or most likely when you're in your home during lockdown, you can create some space somewhere, somehow that works for you yeah. to speak to Jesus and listen to him and reveal yourself to him. The key thing for all of this is your desire. It's your hunger. You might have heard this and think, wow, I'm more hard-hearted than soft-hearted. But as we saw in Nicodemus, as we see all through the New Testament, the Spirit of God loves to soften hearts. So if you have a he desire desire to grow in intimacy with Jesus, Holy Spirit will lead you to that place. Just put the effort in. I just want to finish by telling you about this guy, John Mumford, who now is International Director of Vineyard Churches. He was our church leader at South of Southern Vineyard, and I've spoken about him before. He was a guy who used to show up to church in a blazer and cufflinks and mustard-coloured cords. You know, he was a man who wouldn't naturally, uh, you would associate with public displays of affection. Yeah, he wasn't kind of, he didn't exude, you know, I'm, I'm an intimate, I'm a man who loves intimacy. But he used to say at the start of his, you know, the start of his movement in the, into the power of the Spirit, um, he, he, he had this one thing, he went off and saw John Wimber, who's found with a vineyard in California. And when he came back, he was stood up one day in front of church and he felt like Jesus, the Holy Spirit said to him, you need to sing a song of worship over the congregation and his congregation sat in pews old style church uh, very you know formal you'd look up the hymn book and you wouldn't sing an extra verse because everybody knew you know that the hit the song but didn't have that uh, and he said he just had this moment of recoiling against it and ultimately he thought well am i going to do this or not do i want a soft heart or not and he just began to sing over the congregation and that moment he looks back to and says, that was the thing that unlocked the ministry of the Spirit, intimacy with Jesus, and the huge gift of worship that was on the vineyard for many, many years, and we pray still is, was something about that moment where he just made himself uncomfortable. He stretched himself a bit like Mary does here. He did something in front of others that he could criticize, but he did it out of love for Jesus. And if you do that, Jesus will honor it. I swear that to you.
And what we want to do today, we want to, we really want to pray. Uh, the Spirit of God is on this. I uh, just so much feel Him, and we want to uh, and pray right now where you are for an empowering of more worship leaders. Now. If you're in a home right now and you're the only person living in your home, guess what? You've just right now been empowered to be the worship leader in your house. And I want you to claim that, claim that position. You've been, you are now the worship leader in your house. Now, if you're a dad and you're watching, you are the worship leader in your household. Don't leave it to your wife, don't leave it to your partner. It's not your kids, you are the worship leader. The Lord is anointing you and empowering you and calling you to say you're the worship leader in your household, so lead worship. I'm just gonna pray for you. So if you're in a room and there's somebody with you, with you who I've just called out, the dad, we just wanna put hands on them. If you're on your own, just put a hand on yourself. Uh, if there's no dad present and you're not on your own, just find the person you think, yeah, they're the worship leader. Now, the dad only stops being the worship leader when the kid usurps them. So your role as a dad is to be worship leader in your house until one of your kids kicks you off and then they become the worship leader. And that's a moment of delight and joy. If you're not a dad, if you don't live alone, maybe it's you. you maybe it's you. You're the worship leader in your household. So we're just going to pray for you right now. Hands on you. Spirit of God, we call on you. Come and anoint a whole huge crop of worship leaders to be sacrificial, to be totally abandoned to your presence and for deep, deep encounter with you. Holy Spirit, we say come. Come right now. Fall on your people. Equip a whole huge crop of people for worship leading. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Lord. And just say, be filled with the Spirit of God, that you, Jesus will become bigger in your eyes and you'll lead your family, you'll lead your household, you'll lead the people around you into worship, into worship. Now there's some younger guy watching and the Spirit is coming on you and He's anointing you and He's saying you are, you are to be a leader of worship. Now maybe you never play an instrument in your life, but you will lead others into worship, into encounter. And I just wanna pray a, a blessing on you for that. Holy Spirit, come, come right now, please. And for those you know it's you, you can tell it's you, there's a calling on your life to be a worship leader. And I pray blessing on you. Increase that God, what we desperately need in this time. Come, Lord. And there's something that the Lord is calling us to do. Just so many prophetic words about this at the moment. We must refine and write songs about the crucified Lamb. We must, there's just something the Lord's saying for His church. And if you're part of Croydon Vineyard, this is for you. If you're part of another church or even all over the world, we've got people watching from all over the world, the Lord is calling the global church to refocus on the Lamb who was slain, to worship Him, to honor Him, to glorify Him, because no one else could do what He did. That's the thing that we worship Him for. And there's songs that need to be written about that. And the Spirit of God is brooding over His church right now. And He's saying, come, release the creativity and write those songs so we say blessing on you find ways to collaborate with one another on zoom calls or whatever it is to write these things about the glorified wonderful this lamb who was slain Hallelujah 
Christ is risen Bow down before Him For He is Lord of all Sing hallelujah Christ is risen Sing oh what a Savior And oh what a Savior Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Amen. Bow down before him. For he is Lord. The altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ, we come before you, Lord. We come before you, Lord. Beyond our Sunday e-service, we have a variety of groups and activities for the whole family to be involved in. So take a look at our schedule and stay connected. We would love to connect with you. Please visit the Connect page on our website to get in touch, croydonvineyard.org.uk. God loves a cheerful giver. So, for details of how to give to CV, please visit the Give page on our website, and that's croydonvineyard.org.uk. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you at the next e-service.